eaten already. Looking at the questions. Mm. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Ask Audrey. Okay. I've told you before that everybody loves you and they always ask, where's your mother? Where's your mother? Where's your mother? We need Audrey in a video. So I thought it'd be such a cool idea to reach out on social media so that everybody could ask you specific questions that they had for you. And it, they are so varied and it's about you, your past, your upbringing, me, all kinds of stuff. So I've broken them into categories, which would obviously make sense, right? Okay. And we're going to start with the personal get to know Audrey. <laughs> I can't wait to see How much it. time do you have? We, uh, hours. <laughs> hours. Okay, so the first question comes from Sherry C. She says, besides being Dominique's mom, when you were younger, did you have a career outside the home? Can't wait to see the segment, Love Audrey. So tell everybody about your career. First of all, I'm really glad to be back. It's been a while, and this is fun for me, especially being with my daughter. To answer your question, did I have a career when she was young? No. Uh, in those days, uh, women really didn't have a career. And my career was my daughter. <laughs> and I never left her. I didn't want her to be with anybody else. I didn't trust anybody else. So, I might break. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I just didn't trust anyone else until her father became a citizen and I had to go down to the stadium where they had to inaugurate uh, people that were just new into the country, et cetera. And that was about three hours. And I think she was about three or four years old when I left her. And I was scared to death when I left her. What about a career, though? You did start working at some point when I was in probably junior high. When you were in junior high... Um, Beepers. What did I... Oh, my God. The, the first... What, do, you remember, do you remember Beepers before cell phones? And they were absolutely unique. And I, I just thought it was a hoot. So I wanted something to do because she was in school. I had nothing to do. Her father was busy. So I went to a company here in Houston, in uh, Montrose area, and I started selling beepers. I thought, this is the cutest thing. This is the greatest idea. <laughs> Consequently, I sold more beepers mm -hmm. to major companies and individuals than anybody else in the city. I really and truly enjoyed it. That was my first job. Yeah, and then you got into commercial real estate. Then I got into commercial real estate. I didn't want residential because I didn't want to hear, I don't like the color of the carpet, and I don't like the color of the wall, and I don't like the bathroom. So I really preferred commercial because I found it a little bit more intelligent and interesting. So the next question, that's career, and real estate's really what you stayed with right. for the duration. So another person asks, Renee, uh, what's your passion? <laughs> pa passion is my passion. Passion is my passion. I'm passionate about passion. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Passion is my passion. That's Absolutely. Good. I love that. And uh, not only that, uh, which includes laughter, mm -hmm. dancing, singing, eating good food. Yeah. That's passion. That's mm -hmm. all passion. Looking good, feeling good, mm -hmm. working out. Yep. That's passion. There are a lot of questions about that, by the way, that okay. we're going to get to in just a little okay. bit. Another one, Sherry asked about career, so you addressed that already. She wants to know, how do you spend your time now? <laughs> That's a real good question. <laughs> a little difficult right now, to be honest with you. Uh, first of all, I'm not working, and I'm not working for a, a specific reason. And, um, and that has to do with what's going on in the world at the moment. And so what I do really is I concentrate on my computer. All of a sudden, uh, from never knowing computers as a growing up young girl, they just didn't exist at that time, I sort of fell in love with the computer. And what I use the computer for is learning. Mm -hmm. I like learning, and I have certain areas and interests where I learn 
where I can't in a book or on television. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what I'm doing. Plus, I work out a lot. Yeah. I work out, I'm physical, I walk. Um, that's it. That's good. That's it. Yeah, yeah, you do. You spend a lot of time at the gym, which is great. Shane asks, hi, Audrey. I'm 63 from Australia. Wondering what keeps you motivated and what are your main concerns at this stage of life? What keeps you motivating? motivated? I don't know, the universe, the world, what's going on? Um, what keeps me what? Motivated and what are your concerns at this stage of life? Oh, I have concerns. Uh, my concerns is life right now. Mm. And uh, I don't think we have to go into that because that mm -hmm. gets a little bit negative. But I think you all understand what I'm talking about. Because what I'm concerned about, you're concerned about. That's a pretty good way of putting it. Myra says, ask Audrey to tell us about the three most wonderful experiences of her life so far. One. One, um, I took a trip to Europe when I was in my 20s. I got off of the plane in Madrid and I looked around and I said, I'm home. <laughs> there was just something about the environment, the atmosphere, mm -hmm. the people, the, the food, the everything. And I was living in New York at that time and was about to do a TV show, a quiz show, by the way, which has never happened. So I decided somehow in my mind, I was going to stay in Europe because mm -hmm. I just loved it. And I did. And uh, I was on a yacht with a friend of mine from London and uh, traveled. And then I met her father in Corsica. And we spent the night, to, we spent the evening together just having no, dinner. Tell, tell them the truth. No, no, right, no, really. This, we, we, had no, we had lunch, we had lunch together. He came on my, my boat, the boat that I was on. I was only on a 40 footer. He, was, he came in on an 80 footer. And it was just, it said Hamburg, Germany on the side. And I uh, looked at the, the the boat and I said, wow. Yeah, no, and she looked at my dad and she's got a bikini on and he says, wow. <laughs> the rest yeah. is history. And that, you know, that's one thing that European men do. They, <laughs> they know how to flirt. They do, they know how to flirt. Okay, they, so that's one, Europe and dad. Okay, Europe and dad. And Europe then, and dad. Okay, it, but then we traveled, we traveled for two years. That's number two. Right. We traveled for two years. I have been to practically every country in Europe. And uh, then we came, after two years, we decided to leave Europe. He didn't want to stay in Hamburg. We came, my mother had bought a hotel in Palm Beach, Florida. We came to Florida and um, consequently about two years later, this one was born. And that was my number three joy of my life or fun of my life. Glad I made the list. I was going to worry. <laughs> it was at the end. That might be the first, but that's okay. <laughs> um, Let's see. Here we go. Dominique and Audrey, I would love to hear how your family ended up in Texas. I'm right. European and just uh, always thought it was so interesting to know thought and perspectives about where you are right now and where you're going, but also how you got there. Dad getting connected with Hugh Letke from Pennzoil right. to design the Betty Lynn, which was his boat brought us from louisiana to texas right and then that's when dad started pso marine and made the crew and cargo boats that would take um, crew and cargo from shore out to the oil rigs at right. the time so it was really right. the startup of his business that brought us to texas that's exactly right that's yeah. how i got here and i never thought coming from the east coast from lived in philadelphia somebody's somebody had a question about philadelphia I that's coming think. next Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, then I'll talk about that next. So from Philadelphia, from there. Wait, let me ask the question. Okay. Hold on. Okay. 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 Love, okay. Best. I love that name. Best life now. Would love to hear more of when you lived in Philadelphia. Born there. How long? Why you left? Do you still have family there? Do you miss it? No, 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 and no. <laughs> Next question. I was no. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. Well, you lived there until you were. How old? No, I was born. I was born in Philadelphia. Yeah. Boy, was life different then. 
when I was a little girl, life was so different. And every Sunday, I would go with my father. If you're from Philadelphia, it, do you know how many steps there are to the museum where they filmed Rocky? I know. There are 52 steps going up that museum. And uh, the food, phenomenal. The pizza, phenomenal. Soft pretzels, loved. And uh, from there, I did a, a quick quiz show. And I shared an office with Dick Clark. And uh, they shut us down. We moved to New York. And that is how, how I got. I was in my mid-twenties. So that's when you left Philly. That's when I, le I left Philadelphia then. And by the way, I still have, I still have a uh, family there, mm -hmm. but I just, I just don't go back. Yeah. I just don't go back. I don't care for it there. Yeah. Southern. Came Southern. I came Southern. Southern. southern, southern. right. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a good one. I would like to know more about your Ukrainian heritage. What are your memories about your childhood? Part of my family is from Kiev, and, and the other part is Odessa. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was living in Hamburg, I couldn't go to visit or to even see what it was like because the communists were ruling that part of Europe. It was so close to um, Russia. So while I was there, it's unfortunate that I was not able to go there but your grandmother came, and you grew up with your bubby in the house. <laughs> right. So right. You, you had, even though you never went to Ukraine, you had her and her culture. And she didn't speak English, but she, you always talk about what she would bake well, and make. Well, let me tell you about my grandmother. My bubby, as she says. Yeah. My grandmother, I think, spoke 10 words in English, and it was hello, come in, sit down, uh, take your coat off, etc. come into the kitchen, sit, eat. I mean, that was the most important <laughs> thing, mean. eating. And her food was out of this world. She used knishes? To be, she used to make knishes, and she used to bake bread, she used to make challah bread, and I would sit in the kitchen and wait for the loaf to come out. And when it came out and she wasn't looking, I would break off the end piece, pull out the whole center, put a lob of butter on it, and she would start yelling me in Russian or whatever language she was speaking, etc. But the kitchen was really the main... Yeah, focal point. That's the main thing. It, the Europe, Europe and food is just incredible, really and truly. Yeah. This is a good one. I think you'll like this question. Um, Christiane says, what is your most important value in life? Greetings from Berlin, she says. Your most important value. Well, if you're from Berlin, I can tell you as an American that my most important value is freedom. Mm -hmm. Really and truly freedom, especially capitalism. But the most important thing in my life is freedom. Well, this is going to lead perfectly. I, 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 why do I think you've read these before? Hmm. Um, Sandra says, hi, Audrey. What kind of books do you like to read? What's your favorite book? Okay. My favorite book is Atlas Shrugged. Mm -hmm. And that is by probably one of the most intellectual, intelligent Russian woman mm -hmm. that I have ever read. And I read her when she was, when I was 19. Somebody gave me her book and said, I think you should read this. And that was it. I was gone from that point on. You actually met Ayn Rand. I used to attend her lectures. Yes. I, she came to Philadelphia and New York. I attended her lectures. I would sit there mesmerized. I have never, never seen anybody more intelligent. I would read that book. It's a thousand and five pages. No matter how long it takes you, mm -hmm. read it. We now have a series in beauty. Uh, this one's by Laura Greenberg. Laura and I communicate all the time on social media. She's a doll. She says, hey, Audrey, how are you? My question for you is, what is your secret to looking so fabulous? You are ageless. What's your secret? Just wanting to. 
Very simple. It's just. I want to. I want to. I it's, want to, I want to, I want to. It, it's a desire. If you have, if you have the desire, then you take it to the next step. Right. And you do the things that require, and or that enable you, actually, to maintain a youthfulness. And it has to do with thinking. Mm -hmm. It has to do with your lifestyle. It has to do with who you love, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> and who you, who you could just eat up, <laughs> and and um, it's exercise. Mm -hmm. It's eating right, but you have to know. You can't just say, "Gee, I think I'll have a hamburger today," or "I'm going to have a slice of pizza today." You've got to know what's healthy. You've got to know what is good for the body, mm -hmm. and exercise. It's extremely important, yep. extremely important. And the rest sort of takes care of itself. And then what you put on that better body looks even better. Yeah, good point. Um, what makeup do you use? Foundation and blush. Oh, this is a two-parter. This is a good one. So let's do the makeup part first. Then she wants to know, do you date? Any dating advice for mature women? This is gonna get good. Okay, makeup first. Okay, makeup? <laughs> Here, ask her. <laughs> this is the makeup queen. Absolutely. She follows my videos and purchases whatever I feature. So yeah. She's like, what about this? And what about that? And is my foundation too yellow or too dark? And I think it's off. And I, you know, go over and we're like, let's try this out and play and whatnot. But you know what? You know what's funny? The funny thing is, you know, life changes. And I remember when she was a little girl and I would sit in the bathroom putting makeup on, she'd sit on the bed and she would just watch me. Yes. She would watch everything I was doing. She was fascinated. So even when I was a young girl in my 20s and 30s, etc., I always had, it just, it runs in my family. My mother was the same way. My mother was stylish. She was hip. She was fun. She knew how to dress. She was, loved clothes, loved clothes. And she would take me to the best stores in Philadelphia, for those listening in Philadelphia, um, to the Blum store, Blum would tell her. And then, uh, for the, as far as makeup is concerned, I really, I rely on her, I watch her, and not only that, she'll, she'll give me a couple of things mm -hmm. that, that she thinks will look good on me. She'll give me advice as to what color to wear, what, what skin color, etc. I always thought I was a, an olive colored skin. She tells me it's something different, etc. And I listen to her. Yeah, I mean, I you listen. do have olive, but you have a lot of red in you. She's very dark, naturally. I mean, look at the difference between us. I carry yeah. more my father's German side. She's more the darker side. So um, anyway, we've, we've learned to match your chest. But, Plus, but you do, do you like prefer a matte foundation or more of a dewy finish? I like matte. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like a matte. Yeah. You know why? Because I, I need more to cover up right now. <laughs> Don't. Don't. Beautiful. Most beautiful women I know. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh. Do you date? Let's talk about dating advice for mature women. That's a good question. Sit back and relax. Enjoy okay. the show. Okay. I'm not going to tell you how many times I've been married. Um, Keep going. However, Keep going. I, um, I started dating... I started doing dating, I can't remember, when I was in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale, and instead of on the computer, they had newspapers, and you could contact people through a newspaper, and then finally it went to computer, and... Um, so was your first site Match.com that you got the on? Fir my first site is, and I'll tell you, I probably think it's, it's, it's still the best. I think the time right now is a little bit difficult, and I'm not. Yeah. I'm not only talking about age. I'm just talking about everything. Sure. And uh, so I went on Match.com, and uh, had a lot of dates. I really did. I had a lot of dates, and I think I was in my sixties, uh, whatever. I don't remember when you started. When I started, right? Yeah. Believe Wait. believe it or not, I got married yeah. on Match.com. Yeah. Unfortunately, it, 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 it was fun, but it didn't last long. Oh, well. So anyway, I did not give up, and uh, I was always a very outgoing, personable person, so I could go almost anywhere 
and meet anybody at any time. But I did choose Match as a backup because you never know. You never know. You just never know where you're going to meet somebody. And then I dated somebody else, another German, and on Match.com. And we married. And that didn't last. <laughs> That didn't last too long. I hate to tell you this, but it didn't last too long. It, it but it is what it is. But you know what? It's, it's, you just keep trying. Right. Just you put try. Put yourself out there. You put yourself out there. Exactly yeah. right. And you met somebody else here in Houston on Match.com. And then I met somebody here in Houston who I just had dinner with a couple of nights ago. See? And we dated for close to five years. Right. And... If it's right, you do something. If you're not sure, then you just take it easy. And that's what I did with him. Very nice, very sweet guy. And um, just basically not 100% my type. And I didn't want to make another mistake. I really and truly did not. And um, so we're still friends. I just went out. We just had dinner the other night. And uh, so the only thing I can say to you that it doesn't really matter. Age doesn't matter. At this time, at this moment in life, it is difficult. And I think you know it. You all know it. It's difficult to go out. It's difficult to meet people. I mean, how do you meet people when places are closed? And it's hard. It's really hard. However, you just keep trying. There you go. Last beauty question, your top three favorite makeup products. Let's say you're on a desert island and you could only take three products with you. What would they be? My hair, my eyes, and my mouth. Okay. So those are the three areas that right. are important to me. So I would take something to make my hair look good. Okay. My eyes to make my eyes pop. So mascara, liner. Mascara, liner, okay. color, etc. And lipstick. I've always liked a, um, God, I can't think of the name. You uh, always like a good bright pink. I always I, I like a big, bold, bright pink. That's correct. Like that's gloss. my favorite. I don't like dark. Yeah. I don't like dark. And I can't wear light because of the color of my... I can't wear... very. My daughter can wear light. I can't because my skin color is, yes. too, is too dark. And I'm light enough to be able to And she do can do it. Yeah. I can't. Okay, let's move on to the subject of love. What are the three things you admire most in a man or a partner? Intelligence. Yeah. Elegance. Style. Uh, that's uh, elegant that's three. style. We can put those together. No, actually, no, there's... intellect. Yeah. Intellect, elegance, and... Um, oh, come on, say it. Sex. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. We're keeping it real here. Yeah. Come on. Right. Come on. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any dream of your mother's that she would still like to fulfill? Do you have a dream that you would still like to fulfill? Oh, with me? Yeah. I, thought, I thought she meant my mother, because <laughs> my answer would have been that she'd still be alive. <laughs> <laughs> Any dream that you would still like to fulfill? Yeah, I would like to be uh, 30 again. 30? <laughs> yeah. Why 30? 30, uh, for some reason or other, 30 was my favorite time of life. Right. It was, I was still young enough, pretty enough, intelligent enough and daring enough. Mm. That was when I just had a, a, a wake up. That was a wake up time for me. That was my favorite time. Lifestyle. Dear Audrey, what keeps you living through life in such a positive and exuberant way? You radiate feminine energy. Well, there are certain areas in life that I have a tremendous interest in. Philosophy is one of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at my bookcase, you'll find tons of books on philosophy. The other is psychology. Mm -hmm. And psychology teaches you how to live, how to even raise a child. I think, I think for you, you kind of summed it up earlier. You're, you read a lot, you exercise, and then you also, you've got friends. I mean, you go out occasionally and you go out and you have your margaritas with your friends. And, you know, I think it's like a little bit of everything. Oh my God, there's so many questions. What time do you get up and go to bed? Anytime I want. <laughs> Could I be her? <laughs> Can I just do that? I'd give anything to Anytime do that. Anytime I want, really. Do you, but you generally. 
I'm a late, I'm a late person. Right. So I tend to go to bed late, and I tend to get up late. I can go. I can go one. I can go to one o'clock. One, one. Yep. Yeah, and then get up at ten. What's the biggest difference in life that you see nowadays? And back when you were in your twenties and thirties, besides technology and innovation, how did people and society change? You know what? That's a long story, <laughs> and I'll tell you why it's a long story. Um, you know, Dominique says to me so often, you know, Mom, you grew up in the best generation. You grew up in the best of times. Yeah. And she's absolutely right. Yeah. People were elegant. They were kind. They smiled. They had fun. There was music. Mm -hmm. There was laughter. There was food was important. Mm -hmm. uh, family was very important mm -hmm. at that time. God. That's, hey, I that's mean, the whole, the whole, right, uh, the whole everything. era was totally different, was elegant. Yeah, it was a, it was a huge cultural difference. Right. And, and a value right. system difference. Right. Yeah, lucky you, you're so lucky. Yeah, I was. I know. Let's go into wellness. Um, how do you deal with any aches and pains of aging? Do you have a favorite supplement or therapy for various ailments? I have no aches and pains. And the reason I have no aches and pains is because I exercise. And I think I take about 15 or 18 supplements. <laughs> and, um, and I know what to take. You see, when you have an interest, when you have an interest in maintaining your body, you learn how to do that. And that's exactly what I did. So I take supplements that are proper for me and I make sure that they're high quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will not skimp on that yeah. because that's important. The next question is about your diet. Do you have a special diet? Yeah, you know what I started doing? Um, I've always been, uh, when I was a teenager, I was a little bit on the heavy side. Teenage She's food. Curvy. Te yeah, it was very curvy. I was always very curvy. And um, now, my diet now is I have three cups of coffee in the morning. I have around 11, 11 30, 12 o'clock a smoothie. Mm -hmm. And that smoothie has a protein powder. It has a coconut milk, not the homogenized pasteurized milk that's not milk. And, uh, and then I'll put some fruit in there and blend it. Mm -hmm. And with that, I will take about 13, 14, 15, supplements. 16, 17 <laughs> supplements. And I, but I know what to take for what. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lesson. It's just how. And then I have dinner. And my dinner consists of a protein and a carb. Simple. I, and you that's don't it. Eat a lot. And she does what I do. She does the intermittent fasting. So she That's correct. Eat. Your first meal will be what, like 11, 11, 11 30, 12, 12 o'clock. Right. You're, you eat dinner early. So you may have dinner at 6. So you're going from 6 o'clock at night until 11 o'clock the next morning before you have your meal. Yeah, that's because you're on the air at 6 o'clock. That's why I'm able to eat at the time. We're having dinner together. <laughs> I won't be on the air at 6 o'clock much longer. We can actually have dinner together. Oh, so excited she's about be, that. She's really going to be missed. No. I'm not kidding. She is really going to be missed. Oh, well, you know what? She had a great run. That had an amazing she run. She did. She, amazing. Absolutely amazing what she has done. So few women started when she started and now have accomplished what she's accomplished and now on to the next phase of her life, which is just unbelie it's unbelievable for me. And when people, people say to me, you're so lucky. Do you know what my answer is? No. She's lucky. <laughs> and don't take it the wrong way. And the reason I say that is because I knew how to raise a child because of my interest in life, which was psychology and philosophy, etc. I just knew how to do it. Next. <laughs> <laughs> well, motherhood and Dominique questions. And these are so funny because everybody seems to think or maybe wants to think that I was some kind of a wild child. So what is the wildest, craziest thing that you and I ever did or have done once I was of legal drinking age? I took her down to Cozumel. Oh, we, we, went, we, went, we went to Cozumel. I was not of legal drinking age. I was 13 and a half. I, it doesn't matter. Who cares? 
My grandmother had her first job when she was 14. Who cares? <laughs> Anyway, we go down to Cozumel, and we're staying at this really nice hotel, and um, we're on the beach, and this one meets a group of college students, and she becomes... High school and college. High school and college, and becomes very friendly with them, and they were really nice, yeah. really nice boys, girls, etc. So they invite her out for a night out. Drinks. Drinks and a party, etc. Like Carlos at and Carlos Charlie's. and Charlie's, right. So she goes out with them, and I'm in Cozumel. I don't know anybody in Cozumel. So I'm just hanging out, and I'm just going to restaurants or bars or whatever. And it's getting later and later and later. And I go back to the hotel, and I'm saying to myself, oh, my God, it's getting late. I don't know where my daughter is. I'm in Cozumel. I'm in another country. I got a kid who's who's that age out with a bunch of college students, etc. And I don't even know their last name. So if I had to in any way try to find her, I wouldn't know how to find her. Three o'clock in the morning, they break there's a knock on the door. They're carrying her in. <laughs> to the room. That was after She's, I threw up in the plant. She threw up outside. There's a, there was a big fountain and a plant planter out there. She threw up there and they carried her up to the room. I tell you, I was never so happy to see my daughter hit my whole life. I'm not kidding. I said, my God, I let her out. I don't even know who she's with. I don't know their names. So that was about the wildest. That was the, that was the, the craziest. And that was the first and only time I ever got so drunk where I threw up, by the way. That was it. I got that out of my system really early. And she was never a drinker. No. Yeah, never a drinker. I'm still not a big right. drinker. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was absolutely That was so big. funny. <laughs> That was so funny. Oh my God, did I get scared? I'm sure oh, you, whoa. you were so mad at me the next day. <laughs> She's down at the beach. I wake up late, like noon. I look around, my mother's gone. I go down to the, be the beach. She's kind of giving me that stink eye look, like, mm, yeah, I know what you did, and you're probably hurting. Yeah, I was. You were upset. Oh, you're worried to death. Well, that of course. Way, you're in a foreign country, your kid's out with a group of kids you don't even know. Yeah. Hell yes. Anyway, lesson learned. Um, so, hello, Audrey. Was Dominique a good girl or a rebel growing up? Do you know the word good? She was even gooder than good. <laughs> I'm not kidding. She was never a rebel. No. Never a rebel. She was, my God, the most perfect child growing up. She did everything. She did everything right. She never did anything wrong. She never did anything ugly or mean. She was not a rebel, was never a rebel. Mm -hmm. Her mother was, I wasn't even that much of a rebel. I, I did, yeah, I was to a degree. To a degree, to a degree I was a rebel. Yeah. And, um, and that was basically my thinking because if I disagreed with the majority of the people and what they were thinking, I just went my own way. And if you want to, call that a rebel, then I was a rebel. Right. She was not. No, I would she, definitely play things by the book. I hate to say it. She was just perfect. No, <laughs> impossible. <laughs> Impossibility. I, was, I, 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 I describe myself as an old soul. I felt like I was brought into this world much older than my actual age. That's true. Right? Yes, Wouldn't absolutely true. Old soul. Yes. Yeah. Uh, where'd you get the name Dominique? Okay. Here's the best one. <laughs> and you know, the interesting thing is, I mentioned Ayn Rand before. Mm -hmm. Now, the book that I recommended was Atlas Shrugged. And this, the book that, the first book that I read that was given to me by a friend was called The Fountainhead. Mm -hmm. And the heroine, the heroine's name in that book was Dominique. Dominique Francon. Right. And um, when I had Dominique, when I knew I was pregnant, there were, the, the names that I like the most are French names. Somehow or another, I just like French names, mm -hmm. especially for females. And the funniest thing is when we moved here, don't forget her last name is Saxe, which is a German name. Mm -hmm. Nobody can, could pronounce Saxe. Mm -hmm. Everybody would say Sache, yep. Sanchez, Sanchez, et cetera. And then they couldn't even pronounce Dominique. They would say Dominique, yeah. which drove me crazy because I purposely picked out this name and I thought it was so beautiful 
and I could not believe that people were not able to pronounce it. So finally, they got it. Now they do call her Dominique. Yep. Saxa, right? <laughs> Get that part. <laughs> what moment were you most proud of me? The minute I saw you. <laughs> but I didn't do anything. That's right. You didn't, you didn't have to. You didn't have to. I, I looked, You're here. <laughs> I looked, I looked, they held her up to me, and I looked at this kid, and I said, oh, my God. I was like half groggy. I said, that's it. I mean, that was the greatest moment in my life, really. Really. I don't know how you mothers out there feel about your children, but let me tell you, I mean, I went crazy, mm -hmm. absolutely crazy. And then the nurses kept yelling at me because I kept running back and forth to the nursery. And if she was crying, I started yelling at the nurses, take care of her, take care of her. In those days, they didn't, they they didn't bring you, they yeah. didn't bring you to, to the mother immediately. So I just kept running out there every half hour. And I was in a nightgown or something, and they said, you better be careful. You're dressing too sexy. You, you're going to have another child soon. That's what they kept telling me at the hospital. But that was it. That's funny. What's your dream for me? Where do we begin? <laughs> yeah, where do we believe? My dream for you mm. is that you stay the way you are. I don't know how you can get really much better. Uh, my dream for you is to always be happy. Mm. Always, always be happy. And to live a life of joy and enjoy your child <laughs> enjoy your child he'll be leaving soon and it's hard it's hard yeah. when they leave but what I want for my daughter is just pure happiness and joy mm. the happier and she is that type anyway she is that type so I want her to stay the way she is. I don't want her to get another day older. I don't. I really don't. Don't get old and stay happy. That's right. And always look gorgeous. And she's always going to look gorgeous. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's good. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Not as much as I love you. Oh, I don't know. Okay. What color of hair do you like best on me? She's not going to like this. <laughs> no, it's okay. Blonde. I, yeah. Blonde. I know. I know you like me best blonde. Yeah. You know why she was born? Uh. When she was born, she had blonde hair. And I have pictures of her uh, with long blonde hair and bangs, etc. So she looks so pretty with blonde hair. Hmm. But she looks great with any color. It doesn't matter whether it's auburn or brown or whatever. But my favorite mm -hmm. was, the, uh, was the blonde. Yeah. Well, I've got blonde highlights in there. I'm kind of a hybrid, sort of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can put in any color you want. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> and Lord right? knows I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. What is your secret to having raised an empowered and confident daughter? Um, the uh, two words that were important to me when I, before I even had her and then when I had her. And the one word, I guess it's two words, that to me are prime. And they should be for every parent who has a child. And that is nurturing and encouraging mm. self-esteem. Mm -hmm. There is nothing greater. There is nothing more that an individual can do or can't do if you don't have self-esteem. Right. And um, I also, through Ayn Rand, found out in those days, you never heard about it. There was only one in Miami. We lived in Miami at that time, Montessori School. And that was the original Montessori School that was affiliated with Italy and I think Belgium or the Netherlands. She was two years old. I ran her over there. <laughs> I enrolled her immediately immediately and you know what she did so well there she really I mean it benefited her mm. um, it's difficult today because the school system is totally different as again I mean 
children don't know history. They don't know a lot about the world. When I read the Montessori system, I said, that's it, there is no other, there is no other school for her. But in this area, educating a child, developing a mind for the future, I can't think of anything more important. Mm -hmm. Nothing. That's it. Nothing is it. <laughs> no, everything is it. But we're out of questions. Okay, well, it's been a pleasure being here again. Maybe in the next, uh, if I'm still around. In a bit. If I'm still around. If I'm still around. Really? I keep myself in shape, etc. Yes. But maybe we can do this again, maybe next year. Maybe it could be like a, year, a yearly thing. Like a right. pap smear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next year's video <laughs> on that note <laughs>